Alright, what's up everyone, how you all doing? Today we have something interesting. Assassin's Creed Mirage is officially the next Assassin's Creed game. That's right. Assassin's Creed Ubisoft basically is bringing in the new Assassin's Creed game. And this time it's gonna be based on the Iraqi aspect. It's more of a like, uh, what can I say? Like Mirage as if they're mentioning the I Iraqi folklore like uh, Alibaba and their... You know those stories like and and if you look into it it will feature the character basim ibn ishaq it's literally the same character in assassin's creed valhalla we've seen there was a character called basim so it's gonna be based on his backstory or not not sure backstory or new story but i'm guessing it's a backstory of basim so we'll see it in assassin's creed uh mirage basically and the reveal will be in september so not too far off basically not the release of course the reveal so i'm excited assassin's creed mirage and i'm also hearing something that this time around as Ubisoft is taking the game to its own uh predecessor uh type of game like assassin's creed rogue or you know black flag you know th th those games were more linear rather than open world this game is gonna be Probably the same, linear, I could be wrong, but that's what I'm hearing, so, very interesting. Next up, we have something very interesting, also, of course, game-related, which is Hogwarts Legacy. I'm a, I'm a Harry Potter fan, so I'm excited for this one. And, well, without a doubt, this game is gonna be epic. Like, very epic. It's an open world. It's, it, it has to be an open world game, or it could be a linear game. We don't know. Probably linear, because you know it's more of a story base, right? And if you look into these, uh, well, the gameplay trailer they revealed, this it it looks good, kind of. I mean, not perfect, but visually it looks fine to me. And I, there are some system requirements that has been published by the game developers, and we'll look into it right now. And if you look into the Hogwarts Legacy official PC requirements, the minimum is 64-bit, uh, obviously, and we understand. Processor is Intel Core i5-8400 8, 8, or AMD Ryzen 5 2600. So, yeah, kind of old, but it's fine. 8 gigs of RAM for minimum, of course, and NVIDIA GTX 1070 or RX Vega 56. And, uh, of, of course, there's X version 12 and 85 gigs of available space and blah, blah, blah. This is going to be low quality settings, by the way. 10 it, 10 it be 60, low quality settings, upscale performance settings. So, obviously, it's not going to look visually good, right? If you look into the recommended, se recommended settings, uh, same thing. Processor didn't really change that much for Ryzen, however. It did change to Ryzen 5 3600. Kind of weird. If you ask me, because the Intel CPU didn't change for the minimum and the recommended, but the um, or AMD one to change kind of doesn't make sense to me because like why would it change? It's not a CPU demanding title anyway. Uh, it makes sense, 16 gigs of RAM and 1080 Ti that they are asking for recommended settings. 1080 Ti and 5700 XT. Basically, we know these are like same, kind of same. And yeah, it's gonna be 1080p 60 FPS. So again, this is recommended for 1080p. So it's not for 4040p or 4, 4K. So we don't know about those ones. I, I'm, I can guarantee you for those you would require a 30 series or uh, a 6000 series of GPU or maybe less. Who knows? But this is a high quality settings as you can see, and upscale quality settings as well. Next up, we have something interesting. MSI has published in China, of course. Uh, this 20 gigs of RTX 3080. That's right. This is an, this is an RTX 3080, and it's uh, 20 gigabits bytes. Sorry. And if you look into it, it's basically the same card as the MSI 3080, 12 gigs. You know, the same thing. And this is a confirmation right here, as you can see. GA102, GeForce RTX 3080, 20 gigabytes. So yeah, like it's very strange. Only in China. Nowhere else, seems like. Next up, we have another Intel Core i9-3900K Raptor Lake CPU. Gets tested. 
basically. And the launch is in October, by the way, so it's getting heated. And this is the Cinebench R23. And, well, if you look into the CP uh, Cinebench R23 and CPU-Z, and if you look into the uh, scores here, 12900K is getting 2003 in, in the single core, and multi core is 27343. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, but 3900K at 4.9 GHz at performance score and efficiency at 3.7, we're getting 1931, kind of lower, but the multi core is very high, 35572. But if you look into the 5.2 GHz in performance score and the Efficiency core getting 3.8 gigahertz. Now we are getting kind of similar, like 2056, a little bit ahead, but not really that much of a difference. But the multi core is getting 37,176. That's a lot. 10,000 more, as you can see, compared to the 12900K. And in the CPU Z test here, basically the same thing, as you can see, the single core, like uh, same score, similar. But the multi core is getting much higher like comparatively much higher 15591.9 basically 10 like it doesn't make a difference but yeah like it's doing pretty good i guess and if you look into some gaming benchmark this is a uh, some kind some sort of gaming benchmark I, I mean i can understand this thing cyberpunk 2077 and if you look into it it's getting 1000 uh, not 1000 174 0.32 FPS average uh, compared to 12900K 157.94 and in other games it's probably Forza Horizon 5 because that's the only game that comes in my mind yep uh, 105 versus 102 not too much of a gain but I guess it's not a CPU demanding game after all yeah there are other games but I don't understand what these games are because you know they're Chinese and similar case here we're comparing the uh, performance score getting 5.5 gigahertz a little bit higher surprisingly it is doing worse yes in some titles not all the titles but right th in this title is getting worse this one kind of winning very good this one not too big of a D lead this one losing for the horizon 5 i guess this is uh, 105 a little bit gain not too much not 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 too much noticeable and there's another game i don't know what that game is again chinese uh, 158 so yeah interesting next up we have intel third generation again similar news raptor lake cpu's final lineup coming from wccf tech uh after all uh let's see and if you look into the lineup here intel third generation raptor lake primary cpu lineup we got i9-3900K, i7-3700K, i5-3600K, and i9-3900K, we talked about it before, uh, i7-3700, and i5-3400, so, yeah, this is the full lineup, as we can see, and if you look into some of the information here, this is gonna be a 24 core, 8 performance core, 16 efficiency cores, uh, i7 is gonna be 8 performance core, 8 efficiency cores, uh, i5 is gonna be 6 plus 8, um, i9 3900 is going to be the same 8 plus 16, 8 plus 8 for i7, uh, 3700, and for 3400 is going to be 6 plus 4, so kind of less efficiency core right here. The base clock is 3 for i9 3900K, and the boost clock uh, Intel TMV 1 core 5.8 basically, that's the highest that they're going for. And it supports DDR4 and DDR5 both. For, for DDR5, of course, they're mentioning 5600, that's the recommended. So, yeah, like, kind of lower. And also, left, if you look into the KF uh, models here, as you can see, the F models and the KF models, the similar case, nothing surprising. Uh, maybe in the base clock there are some differences. Probably. Yeah, but the boost clock in this one is 5.8. It still remains the same for uh, 3900F series. It's going to be 5.6. And the other information is still yet to be known. So, yeah, we have to wait then. Next up, we have something interesting. This is a triple form coming from HXL. And if you look into it, it's a score of 3800-984. But it's a 16 core, 32 threads processor. And I mean, what kind of processor that is? Probably something that already exists, which is 
uh, not e exist, which is coming soon. But we do know what kind of lineup it's going for. 1632, well, I guess it's AMD. 7950X, yeah, that's it. That's right there. And it's getting around 3800, 984 in Cinebench R23. It's a huge performance. And if you compare that to the uh, i9 um, model from 13th generation, the Raptor Lake series, it's kind of close. Pretty close. I mean, it did reach 40K with 350 watts performance mode, the i9 model. But this one is also getting very close. But we do know that AMD will perform very well in the single core, which is going to be good for the game gamers, of course, because in you know, a single core equals more gaming performance. That's how it works. Next up, next up, we have something very interesting. RTX 3090 Super, but hear me out. It's a different color. Yeah, if you look into that, that's a Super, by the way. RTX 3090 Super, but the color, as you can see, the color scheme is very different. I don't know if it's what, what kind of color it is, is it like? I, I don't know what kind of color that is. But. Next up, we have information for 4080 and 4090. But for 4080, there's a catch. There are two models. 16 gigs and 12 gigs. Yes. Not surprised. The, I mean, in the, in the 30, 3000 series, we, we did see that there was a 10 gig, gig, gigs model and six, uh, 12 gigs model. And now we're seeing 20 gigs model in China. So, kind of surprising. Now we're seeing uh, a bump, bumped up, uh, I guess, specs, 16 gigs and 12 gigs, no 10 gigs model, of course. And 4090 with 24 gigs, we already know that. But we also have some uh, ten information about the uh, layers, 10 layers for 12 gigs and 16 gigs, uh, it will have 12 layers of PCV. Uh, yeah, so that's the information that's coming from Mega. A size GPU or Z Wang, whatever you want to mention. All right, this is it for today. Hope you enjoyed, and well, this was some good amount of information coming in from the whole tech leakers and tech, and uh, you know, all the tech world. Yeah, basically, what do you think about the 4080 models, and what do you think about the 3090 Super being released now or coming very soon? I guess it's the leaks. I guess. What do you think about that? Is it really late, or does it even make sense coming right now? Let me know.